It's really funny because when you start uploading videos, it's your family and friends that start laughing at you first. If you had 25 grand right now, where would you invest it? If we had staff at the time, I had to pay my staff, couldn't access the business account. I called the banks up and they were like, we've blocked it for fraud. There's an unknown transaction. Looking at other people as well and like they get so much backlash. They do. For like the tiniest little things. If I'm being myself, there's gonna be some people that are gonna like me, some people are not. That's just something you have to realize very fast. I'm gonna be putting myself out there. There's gonna be 50% that hate me and 50% that love me. Because life is getting so expensive, I feel like the average person will have to really think about what they're doing. Is your nine to five job the best route going forward? What if he came home and said to you that I wanna get married twice? See, one of the biggest things that people don't do is think. So this is another skill altogether. It's not thinking of ways to make money. You gotta think, what am I doing with the money I'm making right now? Welcome back to my channel where we discuss property, business, lifestyle and well-being. If this is the first time you are visiting my channel, then please hit the like and subscribe button. Welcome back to another episode. Today we have another guest with us. She is a property investor, a property developer. She is also a digital mortgage broker. Her property portfolio is worth 1.7 million, so I can't wait to speak with her today. Imagine you're being your true self, mm. your true self who your mum knows and your sister knows you at home, that self, yeah? Oh, then I'm a clown. <laughs> you're gonna get people that are not gonna like you oh, and yeah. you're gonna get people that are gonna like you. That's just facts, 100%. yeah? So if I'm being myself, there's gonna be some people that are gonna like me, some people are not. That's just something you have to realize very fast that as I'm gonna be put, putting myself out there, there's gonna be 50% that hate me and 50% that love me. It's really funny because when you start uploading videos, it's your family and friends that start laughing at you first. <laughs> You're right. It's literally, and then it off puts you so much. I know it does. So it's kind of like, because when I started uploading, and it's not it's not in a bad way, I don't think they mean it in a bad way, but they're, they're the first They don't to, know, innit? They don't. Especially in the Asian household, right? No, and they all laugh, and you go, like, what are you doing kind of thing? And then you you know, forget this. Yeah, yeah, cause yeah, I'm gonna yeah, have yeah, to yeah. Hear. But then it's kind of like looking at other people as well, and like they get so much backlash. They do. But like the tiniest little things. You don't understand, I and get it. Like, like I just give it them back because I, I can't accept it. So it's it does my head in. I know, and it plays in my mind and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to mess with me for the entire day kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, nah, forget, you know what, leave this kind of thing. I'm sort of Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. But, but you know what, you will get there. And if you need help, you know, you can always oh, like... Yeah, yeah. You can, okay, so here's your first question, yeah? Go on. <laughs> what is a qualified mortgage consultant? Okay, so qualified, it's very easy in the UK. Yeah. You've just got to be CMAP qualified. Um, I think I did mine. Literally. You're making out like you just go online and make a course. <laughs> yeah, you just print off your certificate like you do back home. Is it like that? No, no, no. <laughs> no, you do. Um, it's literally CMAP, one, two, three. Um, you've, there's so many online kind of like um, courses that you can do or classroom based. I did yeah. mine through Simply Academy. Okay. Literally, you go in, it's like a five day intense kind of like classroom based, you're back at school, mm. classroom based teaching. Yeah. Um, for CMAP one and two, and then you've got three. You do that, and then you take your exam. So they, they tell you, take your exam straight away because it's fresh in your head kind of thing. Yeah. I think I passed mine literally all, except for one, I passed that second time, all the first time. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not that hard. It's kind of like driving your theory and your practical. Your theory, you don't actually ever apply. Yeah. If I taught my theory now, I would fail. Yeah. It's kind of the same, so it's kind of like, it's there, it's kind of like the rules, regulations and stuff, but you don't it, you don't really apply it to day-to-day -to -day tasks. Well, you do, but not as much, kind okay. of like, just like you're driving. Um, so yeah, so that's how you get qualified. Yeah. Um, but then it's all experience. Do you have your own mortgage company or do you work for a mortgage company? So I change networks. Okay. So I'm currently under as something called an RI. Okay. So it's under a branding, but I've literally just put in my AR application again. So What's actual, AR like to so be it's, um, independent? So think of kind of like a, the mortgage industry as like a pyramid. Right, right at the top, you've got the FCA. Yeah. Then underneath them, you've, you can either, either go directly authorised yeah. or you can go as um, under a network. Yeah. Right, and the network can either be the directly authorised firm yeah. or an actual network. Now, going with a network, it's 
you have loads of limitations. Some of them don't like, you know, expats, or it can be like they don't like quirky stuff or bridging by to let's say don't like that stuff, so you can't touch it. So you're yeah, limited yeah. to what you can actually go out and market for in okay. terms of business. You can go under a DA firm, so directly authorized firm, um, and you can literally, and, and they're a little bit more relaxed, um, and they use kind of like a human approach to actually you doing business, so they're yeah, easier yeah. to actually do. Now I've been with both and literally prefer the DA firm compared to the other one. Okay. Because I don't like the vanilla cases. I like a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. DA firm's better. Um, and then under them, you can either use their branding, their yeah. FCA license, and basically trade as a mortgage broker. Oh, really? Um, or you can have your own company underneath the DA firm or the actual network. Um, so I've literally just put my application in, fingers crossed. <laughs> How long does that process take? Um, so it's anything within three to four months. Okay. Um, can take a little bit longer, can take less, really depends. Yeah. Um, but before you even do that, so let's say you're a newly qualified broker, yeah. you have to get something called a CAS status. What's that? So it's a competence advisor status. Um, so it's basically checking all your cases to make sure they're compliant enough. Yeah. Uh, you're able to advise on your own and stuff like that. So it's not too hard to get. It's just you need to know your stuff basically yeah, 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 uh, yeah to be able yeah. to go out and advise on your own so you're not wrongly advising and then getting sued yeah, because yeah, you yeah. get the wrong advice um so yeah it's pretty much that okay so as a young asian girl what are the challenges you face so far like just in business and just in like life, life general what are the challenges that you have faced um i think a lot to well, be you been blessed oh i wish i was blessed <laughs> not to be honest when i started i started in property when i was like 18. yeah i remember going into the bank and they looked at me and they were like, because I'm really petite, right? So I went into the bank, 18 years old. Mm. So I look even younger than actual yeah, yeah, my yeah. age. And I, mean, I remember the lady, she was literally like, oh, so where's mom and dad? <laughs> and I was like, no, there is, no, I'm doing the application myself. She literally looked at me and she was like, oh. She called a manager over and they were like, oh, come back with mom and dad. I was like, no, I want to do this myself kind of yeah, thing. Obviously, yeah. young, naive, and it's kind of like, you know, this is kind of like what I want to do. Mm. And they were like, no. And then that's when I went to kind of like using a broker and stuff. Um, but I think kind of like the chat, especially kind of like in this industry, very male dominated. It is, isn't it? I think when I started back a couple of years ago, and I, when I used to go to networking events, it was literally spot the female in, in the event. Obviously, now there's quite a lot of kind of like... Um, there's a lot more now, isn't it? There's a lot more. And it's, it's, it's really nice. Yeah. So you go to some of these really big events and stuff and it's there's loads of females and stuff and I remember going to them and it used to be really awkward because it would be like the middle-aged old man without me being stereotypical or anything but literally well, that's true though isn't it's it? the middle-aged old man that's literally there and it's kind of like oh okay yeah and I used to I absolutely hate going to them to be honest I still hate going to them but now I'm kind of what, like networking hey, events yeah I still hate them to be honest um what part do you hate about the networking events I think it's Kind of like social it is anxiety. awkward, it's isn't it? It's really awkward. But then it's kind of like you've got to put in your head that everyone's feeling the same. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's kind of like, so not, I don't have social anxiety. Like I'm really loud and talkative, but it's like, if you see me at a networking event, I'm so quiet. And it's really not me kind of thing. What's that event called in London? Um, Savoy? Savoy's. Savoy's. Yeah. Are they good? Because I've been, I've seen them on, um, on, on social media, I've seen that event and I thought, you know what, I really want to go to that event. Am I missing out on something? Because every time I see on social media, it looks good. Yeah, they're really good. So I've been. Are they? Yeah, I've been to majority of theirs. Yeah. Uh, they actually, they actually are really good. And the good thing about theirs is it's not a sales pitch. So there's not kind of like a sales element. It's more, it literally aimed at you know the the property networking event. Yeah, yeah. Kind yeah. of like, and it's kind of like it's not everyone knows everyone. If that makes sense, there are new faces there. So I know yeah. with a lot of these. Yeah, you know, a lot of these events, especially the ones that happen in Birmingham and stuff, you literally you go to them and everyone knows everyone. So again, it's kind of like, okay, I used to think to myself, what's the point of coming to these? Because I'm not, I'm not meeting new people. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's literally, you go there, someone talks and it's just, it's so boring to the point where it's like, when, when is it ending? I just want to go home. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But no, in terms of like the Savoy's ones, they're, they're actually really good. They hold them in like literally different locations. Yeah. Um, the actual events itself kind of like the last one that happened at the end of it you know there's music there's dance there's food you know there's different types of people from like different backgrounds a bit stuff. more vibes it's it's more kind of like a vibe than a boring kind of yeah, event yeah. that you actually go to 
Do you have to be a member to go there? Or? So I think originally it was invite only. Right. Uh, I think they're still invite only, to be honest. Right. Um, but the last one that they did, they did kind of like a, I think it's a poll that they did or something like that. And you basically put your names because they had they had like a huge list or something. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. were picking kind of like names. So it's, it is it is an invite only event, so you can't just rock up. Yeah, yeah. Um, or take a plus one and so on. So it yeah, is, you, know, you can't. Right. You know, it is it is actually a kind of like an invite only event, but they're really good. I what think, about that peak performance? Uh, what's his name? Aaron. So I went, Have you been to any of his events? I went to not the last one, the one before that. Yeah. That was pretty good. Um, they had Mark, I can't remember his surname, it's really bad, I'm really bad with names. Yeah, so am I. He was so, like his speech was so good. That was when I had a kick up the backside and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do marketing now and then I stopped. <laughs> on the back of that? Yeah, you, on the you... back of that, literally I was like, I'm gonna do marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's like, that was really good because it was kind of like, it was a really good environment. The only thing that I hated that it was, so hot in there. Oh, was it? <laughs> I melted. It was so hot in there, but the actual event was really good. I seen on your Instagram, it says, um, how did you build a 1.7 million pound worth of portfolio? Okay. What, tell me how that, how, how, how is that? What is it? Okay, so I started when I was 18. Yep. And oh, I went to uni as a normal person. Yeah, yeah, Got yeah. ill, didn't, I had to drop out. Well, I didn't drop out, I got forced to drop out by my lecturers. <laughs> yeah. And then, I was doing nothing originally. My dad was doing, he does cars and stuff. Um, he had a, an unencumbered property. Yeah. And at the time he was like, okay, what, what do you want to kind of like do? He, I think he was a little bit nervous in terms of, I was really young. Yeah. It was, you know, are we going to waste money kind of thing? He's always been, in terms of like commercial, He's always been renting, but he was paying thousands. Yeah. To you know, to store cars, it's not cheap. Yeah. So I was like, here, what if we find our own place? So my dad does all of the kind of like finding the actual properties and doing the actual deal sourcing. So I do none of that. So he does all that. Yeah. So he actually all all my dad does is the deal sourcing. Is he like? Uh, does he know about all that? Is he been? Has no. He taught? Right. No. no. He all he does is he hasn't been taught. He just he's a really good negotiator. <laughs> so all he does is. He's got experience, finds, isn't it? Finds the actual property. I think it's kind of like age experience and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So he finds the property. The first property that we ever got was uh, rugby. So we purchased that really low. Back then, 115. Right. It was 95 plus fittings or whatever, 115,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now probably estimated 450. Really? So, you know, that was 2016 to now. It's, it's huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the second project that we purchased, that was horrible. That was through auction. Auction is 28 days completion. That yeah. took seven months. Why? So the broker that I had at the time was, you know, qualified. Obviously, I was, oh, I was what, 19, 20? Yeah. At the time, you know, you're young and you think, oh, you is know, that I that broker you told me about? Yeah. You know, at the time, you're like, that I know broker. everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to name his name. <laughs> but you he know, knows who he is. Is it a she or he? He and he's still trading. Is he still trading? Still trading. No good. When you're young and you're like, oh, you know what, I know everything kind of thing. No, yeah, yeah. you don't. Mm. Uh, that was a really big kick up the backside kind of thing. I think that's where I matured up very quickly. Right. Like super quick. Um, that took seven months and we completed, but it was the yet to actually get the property, we ne I nearly lost. At the age of 19, I think it was 19, no, 20, I think I was. Yeah, 20. 60,000 pounds, nearly lost. Nearly had money. Was it your money up. or your family's money or dad? So it was the money that we invested in, well, my dad's money yeah, um, yeah. that we invested into the properties. 60,000 pounds that we, I nearly How? lost. How? Because at the time I agreed with the solicitors that we will put down a non-refundable 60,000. So okay. bear in mind, I've gone into auction, I've won the property, I've given them a, a check of 30,750. There's nothing in my, 750 pounds in my bank account. Called up the broker. Oh, he was like, oh, you'll get the money tomorrow. No, I won't. Because <laughs> nothing was ever done. Yeah. Check obviously <coughs> bounced. Um, the check what? The check bounced. That was horrible, and that was when it was kind of like a wake-up call, like, property is not easy. Yeah. It's, you know, when you go to all of these events and they're like, oh, you can become a millionaire overnight, no. It's stress. Like, I think at that age, it's I don't even know where like, that's come from. Like, you can just literally be a millionaire. It takes I don't time. Know. It makes me really angry when, when you have, you, you know, you see all of them. I'm not going to name them, but you see all of these. Why don't you name them for you? <sighs> let's, let's cause some... Let's cause some havoc. Let's cause some I havoc. Think... I think the principle behind some of these are good, but when mm. they turn around, they're like, you can become a millionaire. 
yeah. in Within 24 10 hours, days. Or, 10 days. You know, I can turn over a million pounds in 24 hours or, you know, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, no, the average Joey can't, you, you're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. You've got to have money behind you. You've got to yeah, have 100%. backing. You've got to have private investors. You're not going to find private investors overnight. It's not going to happen kind of thing. No. And a lot of people, I think, I had a client, literally, who told me she paid, I think, 35 or 45,000 pounds for a mentor. Right. I reviewed her portfolio and it was shit. She purchased new build flats. She paid 35 to 40 grand. On credit. She took out credit cards and loans. To pay for a mentor. Yes. To teach her properties. And she's... and then what she was doing is literally kind of like a, it was kind of like an online course thing. Right. Where you learn online. Yeah. You fill out, you do some examinations and it gets marked and stuff. Hmm. But what is the, what, what is the reason of you spending 45 grand? That 45 grand should be making you money. Yeah. Not not you wasting money, or they should be telling you some mega secrets that you can't Google, yeah. literally, to be able to, or you should be able to get that investment or return very quickly. Because you're, you're paying 45 Did you grand. ask her who the uh, property investor was? She, she did, but I have a really bad memory. Okay, okay. But it, it apparently was some well-known person, I don't know who it was, but again, 45,000, would you not question yourself if you're taking out credit cards and loans? Of course. That within 12 months, you you know, you've now got a portfolio of just new builds and flats, which, in all fairness, are not going to increase in value. And I remember saying to her, you know, what about marketing these, you know, getting your money out and then reinvesting it into actual properties that will appreciate in value or doing some sort of kind of like commercial flips or, you know, something that way you're actually going to make some money. Yeah. Or appreciate in value. And she was just so scared at that point that it's kind of like, no, I'm just going to let this ride out. But it's, it's again, there's so many people Because she's there. locked into that journey, isn't she? Yeah, isn't she? and then obviously last year we had the rate increases like crazy. People were panicking like crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I don't blame them. And, you know, it's, I think mental health doesn't get... People don't mention mental health. They'll mention, oh, you can become a millionaire. Yeah, but yeah. But the, the stress behind it, and in going back to the property where it was £60,000 and me nearly being bankrupt, at such a young age, it's kind of like, oh, my God this is actually going to be my life and you know for the rest of my life will i be able to get another mortgage probably not yeah yeah um will i ever get back because it's 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 a lot of money it's not like two pound fifty you can course, just recover course. back so that was yours then the or that property the yeah. au auction one which took seven months to complete yeah then which so that increased in value so yeah. i think currently that's sitting probably at like seven fifty eight hundred really yeah where was it so that one we put purchased at three hundred um, so that's four acres of land, 12 stable blocks. Really? Um, so that's a big project. That's a big project. Um, but the, the, What are you looking the, to do with it? Kind of like at that time, again, bad investment. Yeah. Yes, it's increased in value. It's really good. Yeah. Bad investment because it's green belt. No knowledge on green belt. And now, ask me anything about green belt. I know everything. I've read all the white papers. What is green belt? Just uh, so people that don't know, yeah, just so, explain so it to them. Green belt is protected land and you can't build on it. Okay. You've got to... You know, it's it's got to be something solid for you to be able to build on it. Now, the only reason I've I've held that within the property portfolio is because yeah. opposite the land, there's like twelve exclusive houses. Down, you know, opposite the bridge, there's yeah. a field down from the bridge. It's a whole village. Right. So you know, at some point, you know, the government have used all of yellow field and brown field. At some point, it will get released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's 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 not like it's in the middle of nowhere. It's already got twelve stable blocks there. So you know, long term. I could I could demolish that, use the same square footage, and, and build a huge house. Yeah, if you and wanted to. And I could to. sell it for you know the houses around in that area are a million plus. Really. Yeah, and plus you know those houses are smaller sized. This one's got four acres of land with it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got it's got you know there's there's loads of potential there, but it's that's more kind of like a long term. Yeah. So what's it doing? Is it just? So I had the then? application go through. Spent an arm and a leg on um, valuations and. It was it was a lot. Um, probably spent about twenty five grand. Okay. On an application, it got rejected, but we knew it was going to get rejected. Yeah. It was an appeal. It got rejected. We've got new planners now. Yeah. So there's a new kind of like plan to do what to do on it kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So now they're saying just reflect what's on the opposite side of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Onto yeah. this side and see what you can do in terms of plans. But that's kind of like an end term goal. But even with that one, it's kind of like now we're thinking, okay, we could turn that long term into probably kind of like holiday lets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 
like an Airbnb type, because it's countryside. The scenery, Cash a little bit. The scenery is like beautiful, but it's currently rented out anyway to um, a dog company. Um, so they train dogs. Okay. So it's not like it's I'm losing out money. You are making money, but I'm you still could, making money on you it. You could be making more money. Yeah. So um, and my dad literally just stole a lot of cars on there and stuff. So it's like it's still use it, we we still use it kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. even on that, the mortgage is is not a lot. So we're still making money. So it's not a detriment if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So do you see yourself being like in property long term or do you see yourself... Long term. Because you understand the reality of property, right? Yeah. So Much it's like now. long term is you have to be, have patience and all this and that. So can you still see yourself being in... Yeah. I think one of like, if you think about it, it's kind of like if you look at the rich. Yeah. They diversify their portfolio. Yeah, they yeah. They will always have property. And it's kind of like, I know there's kind of like this craze at the moment of property is going to dip, prices are going to go down. Yeah. But if you think about it, what do the rich own properties Property. and are they going to let property values decrease most likely not mm -hmm. they're not going to let their assets and you know the rich the rich practically run this country let's be serious yeah it's not the government it's the rich <laughs> are they going to let property de decrease in value no no i, I think that with properties it's just they're just going to come to it, its true price like pre-covid yeah you know because uh, you know in, in covid everything just went boom so that's just not normal, I don't think is it? it went boom. It's it's the craze. I think it was kind of like the craze of the, the rates being super, super low. Yeah. And people going a little bit crazy because we had clients who were paying literally 10, 20, 30,000 pounds on top of valuations. That's just mad. To get pro just to get properties. And they didn't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, they didn't care. And it's like one of my clients at the moment, he's still paying 10 grand on top doesn't care yeah well you know what i know somebody i know like i know a few people all they done was they bought the properties and they just sold them not even mm -hmm. done anything to them and just like made 20 30 grand on it yeah easy 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 kind of like return so what's your strategy with property at the moment what strategy do you like prefer out of everything so we've got a diversified portfolio you know a combination of buy selects and commercials but mm. i prefer commercials uh so it's do one, you? well yeah I don't, I don't really see the like the fun element in buy selects because it's kind of like, okay, you do it up and then you just rent it out. Then you go back to the literally review the, the tenancy agreement once a year. Yeah. Collect rent every single month. Touch wood. <laughs> All of my tenants pay on time, so I don't have an issue. Yeah, I don't yeah. need property managers. Mm. Um, you know, and all my tenants are really good. Uh, to be honest, I'm a really good landlord. I say to them, look, if you have an issue, come to me. Come and see me. Just don't pay. Just don't, don't just not pay kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think they're all pretty good. Like, if they have an issue, they, they'll literally phone up and say, look, I can't pay today. It'll be two days. I'm like, calm. Really? Yeah. So I'm like, it's fine. Because I think you've got to have an element of savings. Mm. You've got to have that just in case tenants don't pay. Yeah. Um, Kind of like a key thing. So see with commercial, literally like you get the commercial and you just, you want to turn into residential or is it, no, you want to just get a commercial and let it out as commercial? No, I do something with the commercial. So for example, the, the one that I'm doing at the moment, yeah. um, that will be a block of flats. Now we're in kind of like 50-50 mind. We either get the, the outline planning, just sell it off yeah. quick time or keep it within the kind of like the portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the whole ground up development. Yeah. It's basically... Um, piece of land with a huge building on it at the moment. Okay. You can't even get to the second floor because there's no staircase. Really? <laughs> literally. Um, I remember the estate agent was literally screaming at my dad not to go up, but he went up. <laughs> um, and he took pictures of upstairs and she was literally standing there with her hands in her head. Well, her, yeah, her head in her hand. What was I saying? Um, like, <laughs> don't go upstairs kind of thing because like, it's not going to cook for our insurance. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like a really run down property. Okay. So, you know, we could easily knock the entire thing down and build a huge block of flats. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Or still keep it commercial. And that will still, you know, fetch in good amount of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, even when you were going back and uh, you were saying about um, the tenant sometimes not paying, mm. there's an insurance what you can get. Literally, what, 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 what happens is if the tenants don't pay, let's just say, and then they, the insurance pay you, yeah, but that, again, it's kind of like it's you don't want to go down that route kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you, you can do it. Obviously, insurances are there to protect you just yeah, in case yeah. kind of thing. But it's, for example, at one of our sites, uh, we rented it out, literally got IDs, vetted the tenants, everything. Yeah. They grew a guy. They grew weed. Did they? They made a massive, like, it was horrendous. Just messed the place up. It, no, they spent thousands. They yeah. spent thousands in there. Um, they always paid on time, so there's no issue. 
So it's kind of like, okay, it's fine kind of thing. We don't need to go check up on the place. Yeah, yeah. It's about a 45 minute drive from us. So we're like, okay, it's fine kind of thing. Then one month they don't pay. So we were a bit like, okay, it's not, it's not like the tenants. Mm. Went to the place, everything's boarded up. The electricity box outside is gone. Yeah. So I remember like, uh, my dad What's calls going me. On here? My dad calls me and he's like, same about like, what the hell, the place looks trashed. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I called up the police and I was like, I need someone to come with me because you can't, because the tenants weren't answering the phones and you can't enter a property without notifying your tenants. 100%, yeah. So I was like, okay, I can't, I can't do that. Definitely was something going on because there's no electricity box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called the police and I gave all my details and they were like, oh, we've been trying to contact you. We've, we've done a massive raid. There was like, honestly, I should show you pictures, but there was like hundreds of like black pots. Pots, yeah. Inside, there was like cables and like, thousands of like they were making some money they, they? They, they, <laughs> it was a huge kind of like plant but bear in mind this land is like it's in rugby but it's like on the outskirts yeah so it's not somewhere that you would go if that makes sense yeah i don't know how they got picked up but literally i had to call me i literally was on the phone to the e like eon last week it cost me like 157 pounds just to get a new connection really but you know, honestly that was cheap because some people were scaring me they were like it's going to cost like 10 grand and that was giving me a heart attack and i was like so we Why had, would it cost that much? I don't know. Some people were literally scaring me. They were like, it's going to cost you 10 grand. And I was like, are you like, serious? And these were like experienced property people, by the way. Yeah, and it yeah, was giving yeah. me an absolute heart attack. And I was like, oh, I have to spend 10 grand to get a new connection. But when I called them up, they were like, 157 pounds. I was like, take my money. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, take it. Just give me a new connection. But it took ages, yeah. ages to clear the entire place out. Okay, so tell me three goals that you want to hit this year in 2023. <laughs> Social media, number one. So do more content and social yeah, media. Yeah, I think more consistency. I think my, um, like I'm doing it with Shara at the moment, it's kind of like um, more kind of like making myself more disciplined in terms of I'm not going to just leave it on like the, in the back of my head, like I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm actually physically going to do it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You've not written them down, have you? No. <laughs> Sorry, Shara, because she actually told me to write these down. <laughs> I think Who's Shara? Is she your coach or something? No, it's, uh, so I do kind of like a, not really, me like kind of like mentoring. Mentoring, but, okay. But it's kind of like more kind of like accountability. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I do accountability sessions with her, so sorry. <laughs> she did tell me to write these down. Um, but I think that that's kind of like another one of my goals for this year is more kind of like being more accountable okay. to myself. And I think it's harder when you're self-employed because it's kind of like... You're comfortable in it. You've got no one to answer to. Kind yeah, of and it's kind of like, oh, you know what? It's fine. I'll do it whatever. And what's your third one? Oh, well, to be honest, this year, my, my goal is to buy an actual residential. So although I have a massive portfolio. Oh, like a house for yourself? Yeah, I don't have a residential. Although I have a massive portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's kind of like one of the top goals. So really? before like the end of this year. Buy a residential home. Yeah. Buy Close to where you live, probably, right? Yeah. They're nice three goals. So get more on social media. Yeah, consistency. Find yeah. a more, do more accountability. Yeah. With partners and buy a residential home. Yeah. I think that's a really good one. What's your morning routine like? That's what I want to know. To be honest, it used to be shit. I'm okay. not even going to lie. Um, so I used to actually have an office pre-COVID. Yeah. So I'd actually go to the office and there's a kind of like a bit of a routine there. And then obviously COVID hit and then you just become lazy and then you sit in your pyjamas and then you do nothing. I think the last couple of weeks, it's a little bit, a little bit more disciplined. Okay. So, so what do you do? Tell me, I want to know details. So you now, wake up in the morning. So, so what time do you wake up? So now it's kind of like... I'm, try I'm trying to be a little bit more disciplined and reading like namaz, so fudger in the morning, and that's like super early. No, so, so what time do you get up? So if What time do you get up today? Today, so, well today was really fun. So I woke up at six. She's laughing. So today I actually woke up at six. <laughs> she knows, right? Turned my alarm off and went back to sleep. Right, okay. So, so you got up at seven? No, I actually got up at half seven. <laughs> <laughs> so literally I woke up at six and I was like, okay, you know what, I'll get up in like two minutes, turned all of my alarms off, yeah. so I'm going to get up, went back to sleep. Right, okay. So I've gone back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And then I woke up at half and I was like, no, okay, I've, I've literally, I've got, I've got so much to do, I've got to get up kind of thing. Like, yeah. It's just a joke. So got up, by the time I've actually like brushed my teeth. So do you change. check your phone when you get up first? Yeah, thing? that's really bad. Okay. I think that's one of the goals I need to like do for this year is don't look at my phone as soon as I get up. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of like emails are on your phone. You have to check it. And it? it's like, it's just there. So you just want it. And you know, when you yeah. look at your time, so I'm actually buying, uh, Shara told me to buy an actual clock. Oh, really? Not to use my phone. So I'm, I'm trying not to use my phone kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I don't. I don't have breakfast. So you don't have breakfast. No, I normally have coffee. Um, yeah. So no, you have a coffee. Yeah, my mum doesn't bring coffee anymore because <laughs> then I don't eat. But if I, if I do, then it's literally have coffee. Yeah. Uh, and then literally start working. That's your morning routine then. That's so do you read books? And if so, which ones? What have you read so far? Or if you don't read books, that's fine as well. I just want to know. No. I used read to read loads of books, to be honest. And <laughs> I don't have time to actually sit there. Because by the time it's like five, six o'clock, I just want to sleep. Yeah. Like it's so, it's, the day gets so tiring that it's kind of. What funny. time do you go to sleep? Well, yesterday I went to sleep at 11, which is quite early. But usually if I get into bed, it's, it can hit one, two o'clock and then I'm going to sleep. Really? Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm sleep deprived. It's really bad. You suffer from anxiety? Yeah. What is anxiety? Do you know what anxiety is? Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like something that happens all of a sudden. Mm. But it's like a rush in you that's going to. For example, when I was going to the Savoy's event, the one that I went to last. Yeah. I, lit, I got out of my car, going to the actual event, mm -hmm. I've walked up to the steps, I've literally panicked. And I've lit, I'm not even joking, I've literally turned around, walked back to my car, I'm going home. Because all of a sudden I've got this kind of like panic within me, like, oh my God, like I don't want to go kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you deal with it then? But then I got a call from one of the girls and they're like, oh, are you here? And I was like, stupidly, I was like, yeah, I will meet you inside. I was like, for fuck's sake. I was like, okay, I'm, I've got to go inside. Um, I don't know. That's why I stopped going networking. I didn't go for so long and I don't really? know why. And it's kind of like, I think the accountability things that I do with like Shara and stuff, it's, it's really good. But very few people know that I had an actual kind of like, what do you call them? Um, I'm not really a therapist, but kind of a therapist. Mm. But I had one for like six, seven months. She was amazing. Okay. But at the time, it's kind of like, it's really hard because when you get these kind of like doubts within yourself, yeah, yeah, you yeah. overthink, it's kind of like you're self-employed. You, yes, you can turn to family, but in my mind, it used to always be kind of like, oh, I'm burdening them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's kind of like all my friends used to come to me with their problems and I was like, oh, I know their problems and I don't want to go with them to them with my problems. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like all of a sudden you're like, I'm on my own. Because a lot of people do suffer from anxiety, but... I think it's just a common problem that. I think it's a uh, mental health, even like anxiety and stuff. It's very yeah. kind of like under the carpet. Mm. N no one really wants to talk about it. And if you talk about it, you look vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like if, you, if you're in the property industry and you start talking about it, you look very vulnerable. Mm. You don't look like the person that anyone can go to. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. like if I started talking to my like clients or any anybody, I have like this or I have that. It's kind of like in the back of their head, like, oh, okay, like, is she actually stable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, mentally, is she stable? Can she actually cope? With, can she do this? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's kind of like that, again, that kind of like, I won't say really fear, but it's in the back of your head, like, people are judging me. Mm. People are going to judge me. They're not going to bring business towards me. They're not going to take me serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, A, I'm female. They're not going to take me serious. Well, not, not, not take me serious, but you know what I mean? It's like... It's not kind of like the male dominance there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and and it's hard, and and sometimes you really have to be, mm. kind of like, not I wouldn't say rude, mm. but straightforward kind of thing. Okay, so are you in a relationship currently? <laughs> I'm gonna get you in trouble here, aren't I? Oh no, I'm not. To be honest, so I you're wear, single. <laughs> I wear a ring. It's really funny because I, I I worked for Santander for like six months. Yeah. I, I wore my ring, my fourth finger, for the six months that I was there, no male approached me because they thought I was married. Oh, really? The second to last day, one of the guys walked over and he was like, oh, well, I really like your rock. I was like, what the fuck are you on about? It was like, oh, your ring. I was like, oh, thanks. He was like, oh, so how long have you been married for? I was like, I'm not, I'm not married. <laughs> he literally turned around and he was, he was laughing. He was like, none of the guys approached you because we all thought you were married. Really? And I was like, oh, well, that was literally the age. Well, you got it. No, I was so happy. <laughs> no, because I did night shifts. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> so I was yeah. like, yeah, literally, that was the goal, not to. Yeah. So um, what sort of men do you actually, like, go for, like, in this current situation? That, what, what, do you, do you, what do you go for? Tell what me. What do I go for? What was your ideal, My like... My sister's uh, going to start laughing. Yeah, because she knows the truth, right? <laughs> well, so far, the wrong type of men. So if, I if I said to you right now, describe <laughs> your perfect guy to me, and the I'm going to bring him to you, what, what would you tell me to go and look for? My mum says this, I need to lower my standards. but Really? I think, I think to start off with, I don't think I would ever be compatible with somebody that does a 9-5. Okay, so he, he can't have a 9-5? Yeah, I don't think a 9-5 at all. It's so not... a 9-5 to five 
No, I can't do nine fives because it's kind of like it's paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And it's different mentality, isn't yeah, it? You're there sending emails two thirty in the morning. He's just not going to get that. He's asleep, kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like I've got to wake up because I've got to get to my shift at nine o'clock. Exactly. And it's kind of like, okay. In the future, okay, I want to go on holiday. Oh, I need to get. I need to book in holiday leave. No. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah. work from literally anywhere. I can and you go can go anywhere. on a holiday when you want. And so. I, can, I can go on holiday and work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I, I can do it kind of thing. So it's, again, it's kind of like long-term goals. It's, it's not going to line up. That's big, that. So you can't have a nine-to-five job. What's that the second bad, option? It's bad, isn't it? It's really bad. It's really bad, isn't what's it? it? I, used to, I used to have the mentality off. Um, now, this, this is going to come across really bad. But it's not. It's, it's not, but, you know. I feel like money matters. Okay. But not in the sense of... Or oh, you've got to be a, like a millionaire or a billionaire. N not in that sense, but right. it's kind of like in the sense of, you know, you've got to have. He's kind of got his shit together, yes. You, you've got to have your. I'm not saying you've got to have your shit together, but you've got to have something there where it, it's kind of like either you're very ambitious in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're gonna get there because an ambitious person will always get there. Of course, right? of course. Compared to someone who's you know always negative kind of thing. Yeah. But it's kind of like always at the, at the same time, it's kind of like life is so expensive. Yeah. And the big, and, and I see this within clients as well, by the way, the biggest arguments happen over finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally finances. And, and I've seen it through like family, like divorces. and stuff. It's always over finances. Hmm. Always over finances. And argue with me or not, it is finances. Okay, so he has to have like, you know, and be ambitious. Be ambitious. Can't be broke, right? <sighs> She's laughing. Basically, that's what yeah. you're saying, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what else? Make you smile, make you laugh. I think it's got, it's got to be somebody who's very energetic. Yeah. Somebody who's always laughing. Obviously, takes life seriously. Yeah, you know, yeah. To an extent. Be the alpha male. Yeah. Do, would you want to be the little girl who like, I feel like just like says, "You will go and wash the dishes." And oh no. No. I'm a really so, shit cook. Okay. <laughs> She's laughing. I, I'm a really bad cook. He's got to know how to cook. Oh, he has to. So yeah, he has to be um, a chef. Really bad cook. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of like a step forward kind of thing and then yeah. a step back and it's kind of like, oh. What if he came home and said to you that, um, like, I want to get married twice? Oh, no, that's a no. That's a no. That's a no. Okay. I think. So you want to be the first one, number one and the only the one. The only one, yeah. I think that's a, that's a big no. Right. Like a big, big no. Okay, so a big, huge lesson that you learned in 2022. Not to doubt myself as much. Really? Yeah. I okay. think coming out of lockdown, mm. um, 2021 wasn't the best year kind of thing, mm. um, like personally anyway. But it's kind of like 2022, It was. I think it was a bit of a slow year. Everything was still getting into place and motion kind of thing. The end yeah. of 22 wasn't the best. But in that year, I doubted myself quite a lot. So this year, it's kind of like, no, I know my shit. I know what I'm doing kind of thing. I have everything aligned for me. Mm. You know, I've just got to make sure I, I'm moving at a very fast pace. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, yeah, I yeah, will yeah. be left behind. And I feel like today's day and age, it's everything is very fast. Everything's going very fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, and if I literally do what I did last year, that there's no. What's the point of me actually working? Kind of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people suffer from um, doubt, but yeah. Okay, so for someone who's watching you, right? Uh, for someone who wants to get into business. What is the best way for them to start a business? Research. Google has literally everything. There yeah. is so much that you can do. Um, literally on that. Um, network. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't mean in terms of like network physically going and doing network. The reason why I'm so busy is because I network online. Mm. You know, LinkedIn, make, you know, links online and stuff, social media, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. through friends, through peers, like tell people what you're actually doing. Something 100%, that I, actually, you know I don't actually do. And I yeah. think like you don't need a lot to start off with. You just you need that ambition. You need that drive within yourself because if you don't have that drive, there's no point of you doing it. Might as well sit in your nine five. I say that just to people all the time that if people don't know who you are, how they're gonna you know ever buy from you. So yeah. you know exposure equals expansion. Yeah. And I think that um, you have to put yourself out there. Drives. What's your favorite dish? Like in Asian dish? What do you like? Do you like like? Um, aloo chaat. Aloo chaat. Yeah, or daipale. Oh, daipale, yeah. Everyone likes that. Bani puri. Mm. We well, cook a lot. My mum cooks a lot of biryani. If you eat my mum's biryani, you'll, you'll never like anyone else's biryani. Can you make Can you make me a biryani then? Your mum's biryani. I want to taste I, it. You won't. You won't. Next time. You won't when, like mine. <laughs> not yours. I'm talking about. Can your mum? When your mum makes it. Next I, I time. remember I made rice for the first time. It was mashed potato. Yeah. 
My gra I asked my grandma to come help me. She said, suck the ass and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> she literally looked at it and she was like, nah, just, there's no hope. I want to taste your mum's biryani. So next time when I she cooks you. it, if anything's happening, like I'm crossing like motorways yeah, or something, just, just let me know. It. I'll just get someone to pick it up or something. Yeah. Just want to taste it. Oh, my mum's sag. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm a fan of sag. I, I'm I not like a foodie, it. but I'm yeah. Not, I don't mind that. You know what? I even like a good dal sometimes. I hate dal. No, well, I... Why? Like... You can't go wrong with basic stuff sometimes. Bamara so valika kana. It's like old. It's like <laughs> sick people's food. Okay. What are the, some of the things uh, people do that, you know, they get their mortgage refused? Like, what is, like, they shouldn't do the this? The biggest thing is credit card. I'm not even joking. Credit. The best way to check, check my file. Uh, so lenders can use any of one of the four major reference agencies in the yeah. UK. Now there's no point of you going on to each individual one and paying or getting free script subscriptions and you know having a look. Yep. Easiest way is check my file. Go to check It'll my file. One report, all four. Because let's say you've got a credit card or a loan. Yeah. You know, Equifax might report it, Experian won't. Every single lender you know, it's their own criteria and yeah. they will choose which lent, which uh, reference agency they want to take a report from. Okay. And they'll score you based on that. Now, let's say, for example, um, your experience is perfectly fine and that's, you know, all your life you've been checking it, it's perfectly fine. 10, 10 score out of there, a thousand out of a thousand on there. But your Equifax, you've got a blip on there and your, let's say, Lloyds or whoever it is, accidentally put a, an arrangement to pay or, I don't know, a missed payment on there. Mm. Now, you know, there's, there's various things within that where you can get refused, mm. okay? So the first thing would be check your, literally check my file. Every right? month, yeah? I check mine religiously every single month, but only because I'm in property yeah, and yeah. I need to. But if you want to buy a house, I'd say start looking at it probably three to four months before. Yeah. Because if there is anything on there, by the time you've rectified it, it's, it you're getting closer. Okay, so if you had 25 grand right now, mm -hmm. Where would you invest it? A smaller flip, if it was 25 grand. Um, probably up north, because it's expanding much quicker. Yeah. Um, but again, it's kind of like, it, it look around you. Uh, the, the, the thing that my dad does all the time, literally drives around. Really? Drives around, and he's got a really good memory, but he'll jot in his head kind of thing, kind of like, oh, this has been on the market for so long. And then we'll dig out who owns it. Mm. And then go directly to them okay, your property's been on the market for X, you know, this many months or a year or whatever, yeah. hasn't sold, you know, can we do some sort of an agreement mm. to actually do it? You know, if you've got 25 grand lying, there's so many things that you can actually invest in. But I think for me, again, one thing that I need to do this year, diversify my portfolio in terms of income. Yeah, 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 yeah. So apart from property, would you do anything else with 25 grand? I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Okay. If I'm not, if I'm actually totally honest, I haven't actually thought about what I would. I think one thing that I was discussing with my dad was, you know, maybe open up a different business, have that daily income coming in. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. kind of like a takeaway or something. I know you've got takeaways. Yeah, uh, well, restaurants. Uh, just a restaurant one. Yeah, yeah, but it's kind of like, have, I think it's very important to have daily income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, than having like the big ticket kind of like uh, investments and stuff. Mm. Um, but I think a, a goal for this year is diversify income streams. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And learn other types of income streams than just property because that's all I've literally focused on in the last seven, eight years. Yeah, 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 yeah. How old are you? 26. You're still young. Mm, 27 in a couple of days. <laughs> Have you invested anything into crypto? And if not, what's your thoughts on crypto? If you have, tell me your thoughts. Not crypto, but Forex. Okay. Um, so I did, I did, a, I spent like a thousand pounds. Learning about it. Yeah, on a course. Please tell me it's real because I've heard from people that's a scam. you know what, scam. I did it, I did it back in like 2017, 18, I think it was. Right. And I met my best friend through that, by the way. And um, so we went on the actual course, but we did it in London. Yeah. So it was uh, every weekend. So my mum would drive me up to London. Yeah. And then go to my friend's house. Um, and I would sit there and it's like a whole day teaching or whatever thing. Yeah, yeah. We actually made good money, but the stress is, is literally gambling. I'm not even joking, it was gambling. Like I, I understand the, the fundamentals and everything behind it. Literally gambling. Like, you know, back then you could literally put in a lot of money, like even, a, no, sorry, a little bit of money and make couple of thousand. Really? On a very good day. Or lose all your money, very quickly. But now it's kind of like, I think the rules and regulations changed at some point. We stopped doing it because it, it gave me a heart attack. I forgot to ask you before, so 
Name me two UK mentors or companies that do, you know, mentorship for properties mm -hmm. who you respect and name me a few that you think are just bad news. I knew you could ask this. Why? Okay, so we're going to name names now. Um, just like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just straight up. It's a straight up question. Straight really. up I just want to know. Okay. Um, Let's start with the bad ones first. Oh, the bad ones. And then we'll go on to the good ones. Then we'll forget about the bad ones. Oh, we'll forget about the bad ones. Um, I'm really bad with names, you know. No, you're not. I'm really bad with names. I'm going to make you go on your phone <laughs> and start finding this. So you're not copping out of this question. Okay, so obviously, the, like, the top one. I wouldn't say he's he's bad. Like, I like some of his content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he is good in, in certain elements, but I think at some point it does get a bit kind of like, this isn't really, like, the odd person. Yeah, yeah, family yeah, that's leads, fine. Okay, right? okay. I think, the like, the fundamentals behind his teaching is is good to an extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of the kind of like making thousands within a couple of flat, couple of hours and stuff. There, yeah, there's there's got to be some sort of strategies behind them. The mm. the average, the person's not going to be making thousands. Okay. You know, you, or it's kind of like with his in his internal group, he's mentoring them. They are making the money because they're spending the money on him. Mm. So I think it is good in terms of what he's doing, but. To an extent, if that makes sense. Have you done any courses from him? No. None? I think I, I, at one point I did pay that pound that you can go, but I never went. So I've never actually physically went, but I do want to go to one of them to see how they I are. I think it's great for networking. You know, yeah. um, there's loads of people you can meet up there. You know, that because yeah. it's literally one pound you go there. I think you can feel I don't, I don't think he's bad in the terms of fundamentals. You already said it, so. Yeah, you're a bit like, oh. <laughs> I but, see how you're just sugarcoating it now, aren't you? To, yeah, I'm trying not to be too nasty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, probably not. Yeah. Um, Anybody else? Oh my God, there's another one that my friend did. No, because you know what it is? It's good to know because we're in the property game, right? So then people... Simon... So, so, oh, I can't remember what his name is. Simon... Simon. So inch, oh, I don't know what his surname is. So okay. Inch, or something like that. Um, so my friend paid, I think, like... Her and her dad. Her dad paid three three grand. Really? For like five days. Five days, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, food, drinks, and hotel, whatever, and whatever the course is all included in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it made me laugh because she goes, at the end of it, all they got, no course materials, piece of paper with a certificate. Really? Because I literally what said to her. What does that mean, her, right? Because I literally said to her, I was like, oh, I really want to start maybe doing a kind of like a little community and, and like teaching people, but not charging like a, a, a ridiculous fee or whatever. And just having like a really small knit unit that are yeah, 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 that yeah. want to start kind of thing. And I was like, oh, have you got any course materials? And she started laughing and she was like, no. I was like, okay, what did you actually get? She goes, a piece of paper. And I goes, really? okay, what did you actually learn? And she goes, everything that you can get off Google. Really? So I was like, okay, do you learn any strategies? No. She goes, I literally just left my dad because they were all just literally like old men in there. Went to my room and just sat there on my phone. Wow. So I was like, okay, so you basically £1,500 per person. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you've got literally nothing but a That's hotel. Not good. Yeah. A hotel out of it. Well, um, maybe they got the wrong package. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really maybe know. Maybe they got the wrong package. Maybe they got the wrong package. I don't know because he, I think he just. Maybe it was the like, wrong day. <laughs> maybe the wrong day. He does have different types of like. Things that they can get. I think they went on to like, the, I don't know. Well, maybe but, they just wasn't teaching on that day. <laughs> maybe. But he's experienced. So yeah. her dad is actually experienced in property. So I was very confused at why he actually did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe. maybe not. Okay, so name a few good ones. A few good mentors in, in property in UK. Or do you not know any? I don't really follow mentors, if that makes sense. In okay. terms of like, like knowledge. Um, really trying to think now. Shit. So there's no good mentors in UK. No, there is. No, there is. I, we need I to just, open our I own company then. I don't. So I don't network. So it's really bad. Um, okay. So next question. I've got another question. We'll come back on. Okay. To that, we'll if come you back. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah, you can think about it. So quickest way for someone who wants to improve their credit score. Okay, this is not advice, by the way, because I can get sued for that. Okay. Okay, but I would say the quickest way to come improve, on, people want to know some secrets. What should they improve do? your credit file? Okay. Um, take out a credit card. Mm. -hmm. Okay, I think that the, the best way to do and take out credit cards to not be rejected is go on to the actually credit experience, yep. make an account, yeah. and they have an actual section where you can actually go and they'll do a soft search on the entire market to yep. see which, which credit one you're cards, eligible yeah, to. Yep. But it'll give you a scoring out of 100. Yep. So I did my American Express through that. Right. Um, but 
for example, if you want to increase it, yeah. take out a credit card, yeah. use it, yep. but pay it off every single month before the due date. Got it. So a couple of days before the due date, pay it off, yeah. and it will start increasing your credit file really quick. Right. Um, don't take out loads of credit cards. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Um, but, it, but also be very kind of like picky on which ones you choose. Mm. Um, for example, I, I've got my Barclays one, which is 0% interest for the first 24 months. Right. My Lloyd's one I don't use anymore, but I've not closed it because the yeah. limit's quite high on it. But the Barclays one, 0% interest, 24 months. So I've got like What's your credit months. limit? Uh, with that one, like three and a half grand. Or can you not remember? Three and a half grand <laughs> with that one. Um, I've gone to you now. No. I can't remember. You're not going to be using that one again. Oh, no. Um, but then, for example, with my American Express, there's not actually a limit on there. Okay. So I've got the Platinum chargeback card. So I pay it off every... So you have to pay So what is, like, off. limit? So you can spend 100 so grand not, on it? You, they kind of, like... It's a bit weird because they review your, your account every yeah. three to six months. So they look at how much you're actually using. Yeah. And they'll cap it on that. But if you start using more, they'll, they'll up the limit kind of thing. Um, so the, initially, when you get the, the actual card... They'll, they'll look, they'll review the first three to six months how you're paying back and how much you're actually using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they'll yeah. assess you. Uh, obviously, if you can't pay back, then you ain't get the card kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. again, it's 0% interest. I've got something crazy like 120,000 points in that already. And I've you only not had it. Um, to be honest, I'm building up and then I'll just take a holiday. So, how, how many points, what is a point, like, uh, how many points I think is a holiday it's or how like, many? I don't know how it works out, but it's like a point per pound or something like that. Really? So it's, it's actually really good. But originally when you start, so when I got mine, it was like, you've got to spend £6,000 in the first three months. Okay. Which obviously is it's easy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But then obviously with that card, I've got my mama card. Mm. Uh, under my card, I've got my mama card, my dad a card. I'll get my sister a card. Everyone's using the card on day-to-day -day basis, normal transactions that you're going to do. We pay it off every single month. We're getting points for it, but we're also spending our normal day-to-day. -day. Yeah, so don't yeah, go yeah. crazy and start spending like stupid like amounts on it. But then we just pay off. So you just done that through Experian? I did that through Experian. So previously when I did it, like um, I think like a year ago, um, it was like 20% chance. Mm. So it was like, because I was still building your credit and stuff. And then like seven, seven months ago, I think, six months ago, um, it came up with like 90% chance. Well, I was like, oh, okay. We're going to put my details in. Because so you, know you know you're going to get it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, so I was like, okay, it says 90% now. I'm actually going to do it because they do a hard, hard search. So put in all my details and literally, because I have like a protection on my name. So they called me, took the password and everything. They're like, oh, yeah, so you'll get your card in like three days. I was like, okay, thanks. So what's the protection? Explain that. Oh, uh, so... A couple of years, this has got to go like seven years ago or something. Somebody tried to use my name to take out a mortgage. Yeah. Um, and they passed everything. And then the bank, Lloyds Bank, blocked my card. Right. So my business card, my personal card, my, they blocked everything. So I remember, but I had to pay, um, we had staff at the time. I had to pay my staff. I couldn't access the business accounts. And then I called the banks up and they were like, oh, there's, um, we, we've blocked it for fraud. There's an unknown transaction. What you want about a known transaction? Mm. So there's no one. Knowing. I was like, this is a business account. It's the, there's transactions. You can see it's going in and out. They were like, okay, we'll unblock it. So I paid one person. It's logged me out, and then I've called the bank up again. Locked me out again, and they were like, okay, you need to come into branch. So I'm thinking, what on earth is going on? They had to close my entire account down because somebody tried to take out a mortgage on my name. Really? And put in like something like twelve grand into my bank account. Wow. So they had to make me a like to like account. They never told me who did it and what happened or what happened with the mortgage. They just figured stuff. out that it was fraud. Yeah, so obviously they've done their trails or whatever, but they had to block every single one of my cards to make sure that it's not affecting the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it was at the point I was thinking, like, how kind of thing, like, oh, yeah, so. So what? So so they put protection on it? Yeah, so it's, it's called a SIFAS protection. Um, or do, do they did offer it? For it? Me. So it's through SIFAS, it's something called SIFAS. Yeah. Um, so I filled out kind of like a form and gave them a password. What is SIFAS? Just explain Um that. So it's kind of like a protection agency. Okay. Um, and yeah, so it's literally just a UK regulated protection agency. So now, for So example, anybody can do it? If anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. But, or if you've, had ever, if you've ever had fraud on your name, um, whoever the lender is, they can offer it to you for free. Because I think it's like £20 for like two years or something. So the bank pay for mine. Um, like every two years, I'll pay for it. 
So now every time I go out and apply for something, they ring you up. They have to ring me, ask me for certain characters, and only I know the password. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I think that's a really good thing to do, especially yeah. someone that's in the game, right? I feel like it, I feel like if you're um, kind of like you have that superstition of oh, someone's going to do something on my name, or I've got too much money in my bank account, or someone will take credit cards out of my name, or if it's happened to you before, and you don't know about it, I think definitely look at SciFast protection. Um, and get that done. So where can you go to get Cyphers protection? Just literally Google? Yeah, literally Google Cyphers. Okay. Um, yeah, and it'll be on your credit, it'll come up on your credit file as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you have protection on your name. Any holidays planned for this year? Unfortunately not. Okay. But workaholic, hopefully. workaholic. Hopefully. So as the last time I went on holiday properly, 2015. Really? Yeah. Where did you go? Pakistan. Lahore. Well, we went, no, we went Turkey, Dubai, and then Pakistan. Yeah. It's really funny because we actually missed our flight. We never told up. This is the first ever holiday that me and my two sisters went on. Right. My dad was. We told my dad. Who you hurt your sister? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my old sister. We told my dad twenty four hours before, so he's hitting the roof at this point. Why? Pakistani dad. Yeah, yeah. I was what like, <laughs> I was what like eighteen, nineteen, eight, eighteen. I think it was eighteen. Mm. But my sister, so I was like nine, seventeen, and my old sister was like twenty. Yeah. And he's hitting the roof. Oh no! Like I'm sending my girls. Like no one's told me. Like he's hitting the roof even at the airport he's screaming at us really literally i think our luggage went over at this point he's literally flipping at us like you're not going we've then got to turkey and it's perfectly fine our flight's in two days so we're fine everything's fine we're not realizing that you've got to get to the airport t two hours before to be honest we're there like an hour and 45 minutes before yeah, yeah, yeah. the lady wouldn't let us onto our flight well she was like you can go onto the flight but your luggage can't go we had six suitcases because mm. we, we, we went on holiday for like four weeks. Mm. She was like, leave your suitcases, you can go. We're like, well, that's four weeks, like six, four weeks worth of clothes in there. We're at the airport, literally crying. We're like, if we call mum and dad, we're going back to England. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we called around friends. That, my mum took all of our cards off us and she sent money to my, my colour. <laughs> so we had no cards on us. Apple Pay wasn't a thing back then. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really common and stuff. Nothing. We were at the airport stranded with probably like 200 pounds cash so called around friends and family and we were like don't tell mom and dad <laughs> my sister's friend each transferred us the money we had to spend the same amount of money just to get new tickets really um so yeah and then yeah so and then my, my parents didn't realize that we actually did that until like a year ago because my sister decided to tell them <laughs> so we kept it a secret for so many years and then my parents found out were they okay though are they? no my mom was like i knew it I knew it. She was like, I knew it. I shouldn't have ever sent you on holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, but we came back in peace, one piece. Okay, so where do you think um, the UK economy is heading? Like, in which direction do you think, you know, is it bad news still, you know, going to be like... No, I think it's... Do you think it'll recover? Like, do you I think, think it's it'll good recover. News? Okay. Um, at, at some stage. Uh, yeah. I don't think very soon. Do you think it's going to be a tough year for people this year? I think it'll be a really tough year because... You know, a couple of years ago, people, you know, during COVID would have taken out huge mortgages. Yeah. Low interest. Now it's going to be high interest. Well, higher than what they used to have. Yeah. You know, people probably, because life is getting so expensive. Yeah. The average person is probably not going to have savings. Mm. The average person is probably going to be spending on heating. Let's be serious. Yeah, yeah. You know, the cost of living is actually going, it's, it's ridiculous because across Europe, heating is probably like very, very low. I don't know if the article was correct, but the article, one of the articles that I read Across Europe, it's something like a hundred dollars a month or something. Really, maximum. we're paying like three fifty, four hundred pounds a month. Yeah, we pay a lot. Like it's ridiculous amounts. Mm. Um, I think because life is getting so expensive, um, I feel like the average person will have to really think about what they're doing. I think at that stage, it's kind of like starting questioning: is your nine five job the, the best route going forward? Especially yeah. if you want to grow a family or something. Do you think the mortgage rates will go up next month? I know it's it's a weird one. So. For example, October, November last year, mm. there was a massive kind of like thing where it's rates are going to go crazy next year. BBC were announcing there was a girl on there that was saying rates are 10%. No, they weren't. They mm. were high. They were very high. They weren't 10%. You'd have to have really crap credit yeah. to, be, to be 10%. Um, but then in December, we saw rates start dropping a little bit. And then all of January, we've seen every single lender be so competitive. Really? Very competitive. And the rates are dropping like crazy. Usually trackers still have early repayment charges, so you'd have penalties to come out of a mortgage early. Mm -hmm. But I'm now advising clients, I give you an advisor client today, take out a tracker. 
because worst case scenario, you, you know, the rate, I think the rate that I gave him was like 3.69. That wasn't, that, that wasn't even, you know, touchable mm. October, November, December last year, um, probably like late October. But now, it, you know, it's there. And I was having a discussion with my client and I was saying, look, worst case scenario, because no one has a crystal ball, we don't know what's going to happen. Rates could shoot, they could drop, continuously drop. Um, now, is, that was with Barclays, by the way. Um, it, now, I said to him, I was like, look, you're, you're saving, you know, three, four hundred pounds here per month, which is a lot of money. You can go to all the, the bills. Worst case scenario, rates go up. Yeah. You can literally fix your rates with no early repayment charge. So you're getting zero penalties, do a product transfer and get it fixed straight away. No issues. Mm. Than doing a whole mortgage application again. So but what can you do? Get a tracker. Yeah, so you get a tracker. Yeah. So again, tracker is like just variable, right? Yeah, so it will fluctuate up and down. So the Bank of England base rate at the moment is, I think, 3.5%. Yeah. The tracker is 3.69, I think it was. Okay. Six something. Now, you know, that's very, very low. Right. Very low. You're not going to get that on a fixed. No. Right? But that's, that's really, really low. So you know, even if he was saving that money for, let's say, three months. Yeah. He still saved, you know, you know, well over a thousand pounds over the three months, then could fix himself if he, you know, n at that point not comfortable and the market's then, you know, switching and it's going back so up again. So are you able to just do that, yeah? Yeah, so you can do a product transfer. So that's literally, your broker will be able to do it. Uh, it's a very simple application. Yeah. Literally can get it done within like an hour, two hours. And you literally, to your current product? It would have to be with a current lender. Got it. So you can't go in then start exploring other lenders. It will have to be with that specific lender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their existing lend uh, kind of like uh, customers rates that they'll have Got it. Interesting, so it would be yeah. specific to the actual bank uh you wouldn't have to go through a full mortgage application yeah so you can you know you can quickly fix yourself just before rates shoot uh, obviously fixed rates come with early repayment charges mm. okay so th there'll be like penalties so for example with this client if he took out a fixed uh for example his was uh, the cheapest was generation homes it was 4.79 percent mm. huge difference between the rates of course it is um that early repayment charge was 2%. So on his mortgage, which was uh, 600,000, it was working around to be around 12 grand. Yeah, 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 yeah. 12 grand is a lot of money. So if rates dropped, it wouldn't be financially, we'd have to do the calculations and so on, but it typically wouldn't be financially feasible for him to come out of that rate to go into a lower rate. But if he's in a tracker, yeah. he could then start to see what the market's doing at the time. And then see which you know, is if best. It's going, if the market's then, you know, in a couple of months going up and he's mm. starting to panic, We'll fix him straight away yeah, if yeah, he's not yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But if they're starting to drop, if he gets to a point where he's like, okay, you know what? These are really good rates. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. Zayma, let's lock in these fixed rates. He's not paying any penalties yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So we can fix them straight away. Into like those. for 25 years or yeah. something. Cool. Okay, so do you ever plan on leaving UK? Like yes. <laughs> You do? Yes. Really? So do I. Where do you want to go? Um, Dubai. For business. And the reason I say for business is because, um, for example, as a mortgage advisor, I have enough experience to open up a, a business there. Um, you know, mortgage brokering at the moment there is, you know, it's not, yes, obviously the, the country has been there for you know, quite a while and so on, but it's not as, you know, there's not a lot of people that are doing it. So it's very, it's, it's only basically Do they starting. have mortgage products in Dubai? Yes, they have banks and they have mortgage advisor and stuff. And you actually get paid much more, <laughs> way much more. Yeah, so I have a lot of expat, expat clients as well. Um, and to be honest, it's like the environment is so much nicer. It's more yeah, yeah, food yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's nicer weather. Uh, you actually want to get out of bed kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more to do kind of thing uh, compared to here. Last question. So what's okay. next for you? Is there anything you want to share with anyone? Any advice, anything you want to give? Um, I would say be true to yourself. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people aren't true to themselves and they get very scared in terms. And I do that themselves as well. It's kind of like, oh, you know what? So-and-so is doing so well. The, I'm not going to do it, especially in the country here in the UK. Yeah, we have so much here. We have so many privileges, so many resources. You know, you, you can go out there and you know we have that advantage. There's so many opportunities, literally, isn't it? Yeah. for us to build opportunity for ourselves yeah. and do something. Well, Zayman, thank you so much for coming on. It's been thanks uh, for having me. I've loved chatting to you, and you know I think you've shared some good tips with people, and you know they'll take something from this. So thank you for coming. Thanks.